it's art of smile, the digital process, uh, the, it's uh, the art of simplify the work of the dentist with a stack and the functional point to create prosthetic teeth that look like natural teeth. Uh, it's how to manage ceramic in with the new materials. Uh, so uh, the Dr. Molinari is from Italy. Uh, he's originally uh, graduated as a dental technician in 1986. He's, he's also a bachelor degree as a dentistry in the University of Bologna in 1993. Uh, he's also has three specialization peri as a perio, implanto, and aesthetics and pros prosthetics. He's mentor of the board of, of the peers, international key opinion leader of Dance Place Rona and Zeiss, and uh, specializing in Kadika in micro dentistry. Doctor, it's a pleasure to have you here as an elite mentor, as an elite dentist. Thank you so much for joining us. And now it's your time and your show. Welcome to the Dentist Web class. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel, for your presentation. And uh, thank you for uh, your invitation. I am very happy to be here with you. And uh, I hope to be able to convey my passion for digital dentistry. Well, guys, let's go. So welcome to my webinar. I am very, very excited to be here with you because you share, like me, the same passion for digital dentistry and for CEREC that will be the, pro the protagonist, the character of this, uh, this webinar. So I would like to introduce me, and uh, I'm Roberto Molinari, and uh, I live and work in, the, in, the, in Mantova, in a historical city of Mantova in the northern Italy. And uh, in my daily practice, I deal with uh, implantology, periodontology, and uh, prostodontic, in which the 90% is digital. And uh, thanks to my knowledge uh, in these topics, I am able to restore the masticatory function of my patient, but uh, with a particular attention to their aesthetic that I consider very, very, very important. So my passion for CEREC, uh, born more or less 20 years ago, when as a manager of my clinic, I decided to introduce uh, the technology in my surgery and in order to digitalize all the workflow in my uh, surgery. And uh, with the aim, I, am, I was able to reduce the time at the chair and uh, 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 saving more money, as I will explain to you in the next step. So for you, and uh, uh, for all the Latino American uh, friends, I uh, took to organize a webinar and uh, touching four objectives. More precisely, I would like to, during my webinar, I would like to explain you why today we must uh, digitalize our surgery. And uh, then as a second point, I would like uh, to share with you my digital workflow that I apply every day on my daily practice on my patient. As a third point, I would like to explain to you uh, uh, some important concept about the potentiality of uh, the digital field that uh, become more and more important in our uh, activities. And then as a first, as a fourth point, I would like to show you a case and uh, showing what my professional approach is in digital aesthetic dentistry. Well, about the first point, why digital? I think that uh, there are fundamentally four reasons because uh, that explain the need to digitalize our surgery. More precisely, the first point has to do with the simplification of the process and uh, more precisely, thanks to this uh, point, we can save money, as we'll explain to you in the next step. The second point has to do with uh, uh, indirectly with marketing. I firmly believe that uh, 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 the prime scam is like uh, an, a marketing instrument because improve our image, 
in front of the patient and improve also the image of our team. The third point has to do with uh, all the variables that could condition following a conventional process that could condition negatively the final result from an accuracy and the precision point of view. The fourth reason that explain that justify the investment to digitalize our surgery has to do with the fact that today more than in the past, we can integrate it, uh, different software to each other and today, most than in the past, I am able to manage uh, not only simple cases, but also complex cases. So about the simplification of the process, as you can see from this slide, uh, the amazing thing about the chart side process is that it allows me to finalize the case in, uh, in less than 90 minutes uh, for a single case or in one day or anyway in a few days for complex cases using Seracan, using the prime scan. And uh, speaking about the second point, uh, and uh, uh, I can say that the digital approach compared to the conventional is certainly more appealing from a psychological point of view. In other words, we are all attracted to technology. And uh, for a patient that sees their dentist using an intraoral scanner is certainly an added value from a marketing and image point of view. That has to be clear. Thanks to CEREC, I gave more value to my therapy compared to my colleagues that approached to the patient with traditional methods. About uh, the third point that justify the investment to digitalize my surgery, and uh, as you can see from this chart in this slide, you can observe a lot of variables that following a conventional, a conventional approach using silicon impression, for example. And uh, there are a lot of variables that could condition negatively the final result and the accuracy and the precision of uh, the restoration made by these methods, this approach. Some of these variables are under control by the operator other variables are not controllable by the operators. And I am speaking about the, the all the dimensional change that all different materials shows us always. Only to this regard, only a good dental technician could manage proper, properly all these variables conditioning positively the final result. And uh, about that, uh, following a digital way, all these variables, I am able to cancel everything because, uh, because I, I pass from the digital impression directly to the milling of the restoration at the end of this process, avoiding, avoiding to use all the materials such as plaster or silicon that, uh, as I have told you before, show me some uh, dimensional change that could uh, condition negatively the final result from an accuracy and from a precision point of view. The only variables that remain in, in, in our daily practice is our preparation ability that could condition the final result. And for this reason, we have to be precise during this step because it's fundamental in order to obtain a good final result. So about the fourth point, about the fourth point and uh, uh, to do, uh, has to do with the integration of the software each other. And uh, it means that today, for example, I use my prime scan and the software CEREC not only for prostodontic, but uh, for a lot of other subjects. For example, I use uh, CEREC, my CEREC and my prime scan at the first appointment when I see the patient for the first time because uh, I always take an impression of the full arch impression of the bold and arches and uh, sharing this STL file of the bold dental arches with other software, I am able to communicate better with the patients. 
I am able in the aesthetic case using other software, I am able to create uh, the digital smile design, I am able to create uh, the digital walks up uh, as we will then see. And thanks to this approach, to this digital approach in a few time, I am able to create the mocap that simulate the final result and that help me to sell better from a marketing point of view, my treatment plan to my potential customer. I also use uh, my CEREC in uh, auto treatment and, uh, uh, and after taking the digital impression, the full arch digital impression, I am able sharing uh, the STL file of the boat impression with uh, sure my aligners or other uh, software, I am able to create uh, uh, the auto treatment so receiving from Densply Sirona all the clear aligners that I use, I gave to the patient that allows the patient to move all the teeth in a proper position before, for example, in my case, before, uh, before finalize the case by prosthesis. Again, I use my CEREC, my prime scan in a surgery, uh, when uh, in implantology, when uh, I, uh, I have to manage complex and simple cases and uh, sharing the STL file with uh, the full arch impression and uh, using uh, other softwares such as uh, Cidexis 4 or Atlantis or Simplan, I am able to position the implants onto the screen of my computer, positioning each of them in a proper position inside into the bone in a virtual environment. And then creating a surgical guides, I, do, I will do directly uh, 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 the, the, the surgical treatment directly into the patient, positioning the implant in a proper position inside into the bone. Again, I use my CEREC, my prime scan in the situation in a complex case in which I have to modify a lot of things such as vertical dimension of occlusion or incisal guides or canine guides. And in these cases, when I need a, a, a dental technician support, I share with him the impression made by my uh, uh, prime scan and uh, he will be able using my impression uh, following the same concept the same digital concept of work he will be able to design the final restoration using different softwares such as uh, inlab 20 or 19 and uh, execute but my first laugh is CEREC, thanks to which uh, today i am able to to manage also complex cases in particular in which aesthetic is involved. Have to be clear that in order to use the scanner in the different topics, we have to use a performance intraoral scanner. And to this regard, Zurich University investigated about the accuracy and the precision of the different scanner that are inside into the dentistry market. And uh, the conclusion about this study were in favor of prime scan and Omnicam that are the most precise scanners into the dentistry market today. About the workflow that uh, I have perfected in the years, uh, it can be divided in four steps. In the first step, I gather all the information, all the clinical information that uh, uh, allows me to pair from the case study, evaluating the indication for the treatment and the motivation uh, of the patient. In the second step, I always simulate the final result using the mocap that I created inside into the patient's mouth. And uh, as I will explain to you in the next step, uh, when I will show a case, uh, and uh, this step is crucial for both, for the patient and uh, for the clinician too. After simulating the final result, uh, it will be possible for me to create uh, the definitive treatment plan into which I will put all the therapy, all the treatment that are necessary to finalize the case in order to satisfy 
the objective that I have planned at the beginning of this process of work. In the third step, the third step is a digital step in which the most important thing to consider is the use of the biocopy function through which I am able by the scanner to copy each anatomical details of the mocap previously created into the patient's mouth and uh, uh, sharing the new morphology with the software CEREC and it will be able uh, at the end, in the end, uh, it will be able to create uh, the definitive virtual restora restoration that will have the same morphology of the mocap previously copied. After the third point, I can follow two different paths. In the cases in which I prefer to finalize the case in my surgery in the same appointment, or in the same day of work, I, des I could decide to follow a chair side process. In the cases in which, as I have told you before, I meet the, uh, and help from my dental technician, I send to him the both full arch dental impression made previously made by my prime scan and my dental technician following the same concept of work digital, you will be able using other design prostodontic uh, software such as uh, InLab and Exocad, it will be able to design the, the final restoration, it will be able to give me the, the, the definitive restoration that I will cement. In the fourth step, I finalize the case by implementing the treatment plan that always takes in consideration the expectation and the goal that my staff, my patient and I have set. About uh, the potentiality of the, of the digital field, there is no limit about the growing up of the digital environment because the potentiality are going up because a lot of companies are investing in this field. Today, I can share an STL file from one software to another without any problem managing complex cases and simplifying the process. That have to be underlined and uh, obtaining a lot of advantages with such as uh, less finalization times, less appointments, less uh, costs because uh, we are able to reduce the time at the chair with the patient, less discomfort for the patient because uh, we reduce the number of the appointment of course but uh, we can't, we, we don't need uh, some temporaries uh, to, 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 to send the patient home with but maintaining the same accuracy and the same precision of the traditional methods. So at the end, there is no limits because uh, the potentiality of uh, the, the, the digital field is growing up in a very fast way. And I am sure that in a few years, probably digital will become our gold standard to follow strictly and in order to create the best uh, uh, prosthetic restoration and the best uh, therapy. So now I would like uh, to show you what my professional approach is uh, uh, telling a story of uh, a patient during which I will focus on some aspect of the operating protocol that I consider very, very important. So more precisely, I'd like uh, to show you the story of uh, Zilmara. Zilmara, she's a Brazilian woman that lived in Italy in my city, Mantua. And uh, the first time I saw her, she told me about herself. She told me that uh, when she lived in, uh, in the south of Italy, she received a lot of treatments with the aim to solve the aesthetic problem in the anterior areas, but as we will then see with the negative results. Her request was only one. She would like to improve the aesthetic of her smile. And uh, she, this, this is the only request that she asked me. 
And uh, going directly to her mind, uh, and as you can see from these slides, uh, she had a lot of problems from an aesthetical point of view. More precisely, Zilmara, uh, it was cemented onto the front areas, uh, two PFN crown onto the tooth 1.1 and 1.2. And uh, as you can see from these slides, the gingival margin of the tooth 1.1, it wasn't balanced with the knife or other central incisors. The other central incisors, the tooth 2.1 was a little bit dyschromic onto the incisor edge, and uh, uh, the tooth 2.2 was uh, restored by a big restoration, composite restoration, that uh, gave to the patient a uh, natural appearance to the whole smile. And uh, this restoration, this composite restoration, showed me a marginal infiltration, as you can see from this, uh, from this image. So in a complex cases like this, in which aesthetic are involved, I always studied yes, the original aesthetic of the patient that I am studying, in order to study better all the features of the original teeth and in order to design the best new smile for that patient. So, in order to design the best uh, new smile following the rule of the digital smile design proposed for the first, as a first from uh, Christian Coachman, I start my activity of study using my prime scan. And uh, the first activity, as a first activity, I, I take an impression of the full arch, the impression of the bold dent arches, and then I upload the STL file directly to another software and more precisely, more precisely, as you can see from this, uh, this video, more precisely, I download the uh, full arch impression, the STL file full arch impression in the Exocat software and more precisely in the module, in, uh, in a Smile Creator module that helped me to design, following all the rules of the digital smile design, the new smile of the patient that I am studying. And uh, with this module, I am able to choose the best morphology in the library. I can modify a lot of things, uh, a lot of things from the, the original morphology, the proposal that the, the software show me. And uh, after that, uh, I can uh, modify stretching the, the, the shape or uh, increasing the size of uh, each uh, tooth, positioning it, as you can see from uh, this video, uh, all the frontal teeth that I have to, to modify directly onto the pictures of the patient. But on the right side of this video, you can see in a two-dimensional way the two-dimensional volume of the wax uh, that uh, I have to put on the original plus on the original virtual model of the patient in order to modify uh, all the morphology of the teeth that I have to treat. The amazing thing about uh, that software is that uh, after designing the new smile, choosing the best morphology. I am able to create a digital WhatsApp. And so in this step, as you can see from this video, I am able to modify a little bit uh, the size of each uh, restoration. And, uh, and uh, I am able to perfectionate uh, uh, all the new smile of that patient that I am starting. In the end of this procedure, of this initial procedure, I uploading the definitive uh, uh, project, the definitive digital WhatsApp with my, uh, with another software again, with the software of my 3D printer, with the aim, I print, I will print the resin master model with all the modifications in order to improve the aesthetic of the teeth that I have to treat onto which I will create the silicon index using always heavy and light silicon 
to better separate to each other the frontal teeth of the mocap when I will create the mocap directly into the patient's mouth. So at the end of this step, I, I have to test the mocap, taking a video, recording a video that allows me to check exactly the relationship between the incisal edges and the lower lip of the patient in a dynamic phase that it's crucial things to do because sometimes the pictures in a shy people are not sufficient to discover, for example, if the patient is a gummy smile patient or not, or in order to discover what it is, the, the relationship between the incisal edges and the lower lip profile view from a frontal perspective. After this test, I only after this test, this, this test, I will be able to create the, the, the definitive treatment plan into which I will put all the treatments, all the therapy that are necessary to finalize the case. And uh, as I am showing to this light, in the case that I am, uh, uh, I am using to explain my process of work, it was divided in two steps, into macro steps and it lasted uh, three months uh, of work. So in the first step, in the first step, I did, uh, it was a surgical step in which I did the gingival resection, in which uh, I eliminated about two millimeter of uh, gingival tissues in the third cervical of the 2.1, discovering completely the animal in this area, and uh, then I removed the PFM crown previously cemented from my Italian colleagues in order to balance better the two, the two gingival margin of the two central incisors. Because I remind you that this patient was a gummy smile patient, and in a gummy smile patient is fundamental before finalizing the case, before finalizing the case uh, by prosthesis, is fundamental to balance to each other's the gingival margin in the front areas in, from a couple of teeth. So after this uh, gingival resection, after three months and obtaining a good maturation of the soft tissues around the temporaries and around the tooth 2.1, I was ready to finalize the case, and, uh, but uh, uh, not before to review the case. So as you can see from, the, from this chart, uh, the second step, in the second step, it, in the second step, it was divided in two days of work. And it was divided in six phases, different phases that uh, a, a, a following chair side process and chair side approach. The first thing to do, as you can see from this uh, video, is uh, create the mocap inside into the patient's mouth. And uh, that is fundamental for two reasons. The first reason has to do with the fact that uh, as a first thing following chair side process, I have to copy each anatomical details of this mocap sharing this good anatomy with the software CEREC in order to, give, to allow it the possibility to create a new restoration with the same morphology of the mocap. Before, do, before doing that, it is necessary to redefine the, uh, 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 the, the mocap, uh, eliminating all the excess of raising by a diamond bar from the palatal surfaces of the teeth, not uh, of the frontal teeth involved into the treatment, and using also a scalpel blade, as you can see from this, uh, this image, uh, with which I remove the excess of raising from the cervical areas. This concept is very, very important because in this step, I have to copy the morphology of the mocap, sharing a good morphology with the softer CEREC. So after that, in the step subsequently, I end after activating the biocopy function 
I took the first impression by my prime scan. With the aim, I copy each anatomical details of the mocap previously created, and uh, and in order to, as I have told you a lot, a lot of time, in order to share with the software the new morphology. In the steps subsequently, then I copy and paste from the box of the biocopy to the box of the upper dental arch the master model with the new morphology in order to have to identical master model that the software can match in, in a simple way. So in a step subsequently, I I activated the digital cutter with the aim I cut uh, uh, the anterior fourth upper incisor from the master model, the upper master model, because in the next step, uh, after preparation step, uh, I can take uh, the last impression, uh, uh, rebuilding this master model and uh, filling completely uh, uh, this space previously created by the digital cutter with the new morphology of the teeth prepared. And the software will be able to rec it will recognize the teeth not involved into the, pre into the step of the preparation and it will be able to match in the two master models perfectly. Perfectly. That is one of the amazing features of this amazing software 5.1. In the steps subsequently, I took the, the, the third impression that involves the antagonist and also for the antagonist in order to rebuild the palatal surfaces of the anterior upper dental arch that will take part of the incisor and canine guides. It's very, very important to take carefully a good impression. The last impression involved the bites of the both sides of, uh, of the patient's mount. I invited the patient to clench in a proper position and thanks to this uh, uh, impression, I share with the software a proper position of the both dental uh, arches. So I was ready for the second phase uh, in which uh, I always start from the mocap and this is the second reason because i always start during preparation step to prepare starting from the mocap because uh, i have to save an amount because uh, everybody of you i am sure know very well that uh, the bonding between enamel and ceramic is stronger is stronger than between dentin and the ceramic so using this reference bar that created some horizontal grooves that have at least a 0.5 millimeter of deep, that is the minimum space request to create uh, some restoration, avoiding fracturing during milling, I create some grooves onto the book surface that help me to save enamel for the reason that I have explained to you before. After that, as uh, uh, you can see from this video, I remove the mocap uh, with a, with a accurate, and then by a very thin pencil, I highlight uh, all the horizontal reference that represent for me some important reference that help me to prepare carefully, avoiding to remove a lot of enamel. In the steps subsequently, then I use uh, uh, this uh, diamond disc with the aim uh, I remove the interproximal contact between the neighbor's teeth, and uh, this is another important uh, thing to do because the scanner have to be scanned precisely the corner that uh, uh, I uh, created after preparation between the buca surface and the interproximal RS in order to highlight the finishing line preparation in the interproximal area, we need to remove the interproximal contact between the, uh, uh, the teeth that we have to prepare. Then, using a chamfer diamond bar and following strictly the, the pencil uh, uh, signal that previously designed 
uh, onto the onto inside into the roughened surface cre previously created by the reference bar and uh, I am able to remove carefully the enamel onto the buca surface creating sufficient space to accommodate uh, the veneers in the in the step subsequently so we prepare gingival or over gingival is not necessary to prepare sub gingival and i prefer carefully and involving all also for 1.5 millimeter the incisor edge because uh, uh, in order to stabilize better the restoration after the cementation in the steps of secondly after prepare with the chamfer bar i use a soft less disc for composite with the aim i remove i redefine better the finishing line preparation on the incisor edge and the interproximal rs and with the aim i remove all the animal prisms not supported by the dentin that could fracture uh, after the cementation, after the, cement, the definitive cementation of the definitive restoration. After these uh, four, four, first four steps, uh, all in the next step, I will position the retraction cord because uh, thanks to these procedures of work, only in this step, uh, with the retraction cord, I will move to apical direction. The soft tissues is around the preparation areas. And uh, thanks to this uh, decision, I am able to highlight better the finishing line preparation in the third cervical. And uh, these uh, things, uh, we have to do these things because uh, 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 it's, simple, it's simpler to scan the finishing line preparation completely outside uh, to the game. That we have to prepare, again, I underline another time, we have to prepare a, a sub-gingival or over-gingival. Preparing sub-gingival is very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous because it will be very difficult for the scanner to, to impress digitally the finishing line pre preparation under the game. After uh, positioning the retraction cord, I also can uh, finalize the preparation in the first cervical using ultrasonic instrument or some hand, hand instrument in order to redefine better the finishing line preparation in the third cervical. That is a very delicate area uh, uh, to be, and we have to be careful to treat it very carefully in order to obtain a great precision and a great accuracy of the restoration during cementation step. In the next step, I came back to my, to my scanner, to my prime scan, and after preparation, again, I took the last impression, scanning only the anterior areas and uh, feeling completely the master model previously cutted by the digital cutter and the completely the master model and the software will be able to match the two master models, the first one previously cutted and the, the second one with the T prepared, creating only one after the matching, only one master model. If you observe uh, uh, this model, in this model, uh, the finishing line preparation, it's uh, uh, absolutely immediately and uh, simply uh, visible. And uh, that allows you to design better the finishing line preparation also under the GAN. For example, in this case, I use powder because thanks to the powder, when I have to reprepare some, uh, some, teeth, like, some teeth, like in this case, and uh, that are just prepared subgingival. In this case, I would like to use powder because uh, highlights better the finishing line preparation subgingival. So after taking the last impression in the steps subsequently in the digital project, I have to create uh, the definitive restoration. Before do that. Uh, I always uh, uh, check uh, the spaces between the teeth preparer and the antagonist uh, in order to check if the thickness 
of the restoration will be sufficient avoiding fracturing during chewing after cementation of the definitive restoration. And following, following strictly all the directives that the software allows us at the beginning, we will design the baseline with the blue line that highlights the finishing line preparation of the teeth prepare. In the steps of sequently, we have to design a copy line onto each homonymous teeth of the virtual mocap previously copied. And following this directive that the software allows us, in automatically way, the software made the matching of the two master molder creating the definitive restoration that will have the same morphology of the mocap previously copied. Of course, in the steps subsequently, you can use all the digital tools that uh, the software makes available in order to modify a little bit or, to, or in order to improve the final morphology of the restoration. And uh, the, the, the software select 5.1 offer to us a lot of uh, digital tools that uh, we can use uh, to modify more or less everything. After project, uh, one of the most important uh, question is, uh, and now which materials I have to use to obtain the best result in this case? To this regard, I firmly believe that the modern dentist that decided to embark in the digital road of digital should know very, very well the physical and the chemical features of the materials of the cat Campbell materials that are inside into the dentistry market. Because that is fundamental, because uh, these features are the, the, the direct expression of the final result from an aesthetic point of view, but also from uh, a biomechanic point of view. And uh, about that, to this regard, I remind you that if it is clear how the natural teeth react to the lights and uh, 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 considering aspects such as opalescence, fluorescence and translucency, our goal is to create the restoration choosing the best material, the proper materials that uh, react to the light in a manner similar to natural teeth, obtaining more or less the same, uh, the same result of the natural teeth. So to obtain this regard and to choose the best materials, I follow strictly uh, my uh, procedures. More precisely, I always take four pictures. One, the first pictures, I compare the color shades with uh, the antagonist that I have to copy, for example, this, I, took this, I take the second pictures, compare the color shade with the, the teeth prepare. I take uh, a third pictures with a, using a polarized light using my, for example, in this case, my microscope uh, Zeiss Xtaro 300 uh, activating, activating the, the true light uh, filter with which uh, we can remove all the flashes of the light uh, onto the buccal surfaces of the natural teeth prepare and not prepare, and positioning a cat cam block in the middle between the teeth prepare and not prepare, you can choose, you can study better the chroma that you have to choose uh, uh, in, the, in, your, uh, uh, in, the, in your library. So I took the last pictures activating the fluorescence light that helped me to compare the basic fluorescency of the different CATCAM blocks of the different uh, materials uh, comparing with the teeth prepare and not prepare. Following this procedure of work, I am able to choose the best material for the case that I am treating. So after choosing a proper cat can blocks, a proper materials, I milled all each restoration previously projected and uh, uh, by my milling machine. And uh, 
To this regard, Prime Mill is a good partner to obtain a more precise restoration after their milling and more also accurate and in a few time. So in a case like this, in which I'm not able to finalize the case cementing directly the, the, the restoration, I, after removing the retraction cord and after cleaning all the powder that, like in this case, I used, I always use the mocap as a temporary using the silicon index, as you can see from this video I created, like in this case, the temporaries. I remove by sculpted blades and by the diamond bar the excess of resin and I uh, send the patient home. I, in this case, in a complex case, I'm not able to finalize the case in only one session, but I postpone the cementation the day after. And in this case, as I have told you before, I use also always the mocap as a temporary without etching and without bonding. But in this case, in order to avoid the inflammation, swelling, and consecutive, the consecutive bleeding, I always suggest to the patient to, 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 to clean. Uh, their teeth with a soft toothbrush using chlorhexidine 2% in gel. And sometimes when my approach during preparation step is a little bit aggressive because of uh, the retraction cord, because of the retraction paste, or because I prepare or I have to prepare subgingival and I touch a little bit uh, the, the, the soft tissues, in this case, I always take an injection in the local areas of four milligram of cortisone in order to stop any bleeding the day after during cementation step. That is fundamental and everybody of, of you should know that uh, we have to cement uh, using the rubber dam that is fundamental to uh, that helped me to isolate the operative side during cementation in order to obtain a more stable system after cementation between natural teeth and uh, the ceramic restoration. So after project and after milling, in the, uh, at the beginning of the second day, I have to finalize uh, 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 the restoration after their milling. And uh, to this regard, we can apply three different techniques that I inserted in my protocol of work when I have to manage the frontal teeth. And I, as usual, I use a polishing technique or staining technique or cutback technique. I use cutback technique like in this case, only in the cases in which I have to disguise uh, 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 dyschromic colors of the teeth after their preparation. And in this case, uh, I have to use uh, 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 low translucent materials that uh, are not translucent, obviously. But in order to give a more natural appearance to the incisal edge of this uh, upper frontal teeth, I always do, when I use this kind of materials, I always apply my cutback technique. With the aim, I am able to modify the uh, incisal edge after its milling and uh, creating some indentation that simulate the dent in mammalum. After that, I can layer different uh, translucent uh, layer of ceramic uh, rebuilding completely the incisal edge and uh, creating this transparency in which uh, I can show through the transparency of the incisal edge the shape of the dentin mammalon, giving a more natural appearance to the whole patient face and uh, on the frontal teeth. That is important when we have to use a low translucent materials. In my modern approach, uh, when I have to manage uh, more than one tooth on the frontal areas, I always uh, print by my 3D printer a master model in resin 
that uh, I am able to create uh, uh, starting from the STL file of the impression of the STL file previously did by uh, the prime scan and the sharing the STL file with my 3D printer, I print the master model with the tip prepare. And the meaning of this master model is not to check the accuracy and the precision of the restoration that are inside into the restoration itself, but uh, this master model in resin helped me to check the interproximal contact between the teeth prepared, milled, and uh, as a support uh, during the layer of uh, uh, the ceramic. Applying the concept that I have shown you before, so I, I created the indentation on the incisal edge of the fourth upper incisors, after that uh, and after the first spearing process in order to crystallize the metasilicate in lithium desilicate, I layer only one layer of uh, opalescent transparent ceramic and after the last fearing process in order to crystallize the ceramic i sculpted the texture on each surfaces of the four upper incisors and i polish only without stain without glaze is not necessary glaze and stain are not necessary only polishing technique it's important, it's very, very important and, uh, and uh, uh, to obtain a great final result from an aesthetic point of view. And uh, as you can see from this chart, the aesthetic of the final restoration were amazing. And uh, uh, the most important thing to consider about this uh, restoration is uh, this transparency on the, on the incisal edges that are uh, typical of the four upper incisors that show, that, uh, uh, show us uh, the, the profile of the dentin mamelo and that give after cementation a natural appearance of the restoration. And uh, thanks to the textures that I sculpted before polishing the frontal teeth, uh, this uh, texture is uh, give a more natural appearance because broken the lights that reflected onto the book surface are giving a more natural appearance again. So after finalizing the fourth uh, definitive restoration in the step subsequently, I removed from the mount, from the patient mount the mocap, I isolated everything by the rubber dam and then I test, I check the precision and the accuracy of each restoration that as you can see from this video was perfectly, was perfect. If you prepare perfectly, the accuracy will be absolutely perfect with a predictable result. After checking the accuracy and the precision in the steps subsequently, we have to check the final colors of the restoration. And to this regard, I always use uh, Calibra cement, and more precisely the glycerin colorful that helped me to choose the best color of the cement. To this regard, I remind you that uh, after cementing, definitively the restoration, they absorb the behind colors of the tooth prepare and the, the restoration, if you don't try the final color with the glycerin colorful, you can do, you can make a mistake. And, uh, and because the final, the final colors of uh, your frontal teeth could change, uh, could change at the end uh, uh, after the cementation. As you can see from this uh, image, on the left side I use a neutral color and uh, on the right side I use uh, white colors and thanks to the glycerin, I am able to check the final colors of the restoration. I underline another time. After this, we can, uh, we can uh, remove the glycerin from the teeth prepare. I uh, remove uh, the glycerin by uh, using alcohol 95%, and then I etch by fluoridic acid 5% for 20 seconds, 
And then for other 30 seconds, I apply autophosphoric acid 37% in order to remove the salt of the crystallization that could be created during the first etching by fluoridic acid. As an alternative, you can put all the restoration after the first etching by fluoridic acid inside into the ultrasonic uh, instrument devices for five minutes using alcohol 95%. After this step, you can see the internal side of this veneer was completely opaque. opaque. This was a good signal that allows you that the restoration was ready to be silanized and then you can apply directly onto the silan uh, uh, directly the adhesive and then the resin, the composite resin that I use to cement the restoration. But not before, not before to some blast all the, uh, the, the, the teeth prepare in order to create some roughened surfaces that uh, offer a more surface to the etching that uh, I have to do in the next, uh, subsequently, in the next step. So in the next step, uh, after some blasting, all the teeth prepare, I isolate by teflon each teeth, the neighbor teeth uh, from the tooth that I have to to etch, I etch the animal, only the animal, onto the buccal surface of the tooth that I have to cement. It's not necessary to, uh, to etch the dentin because uh, you, we have to hybridize the dentin uh, during preparation step uh, uh, in order to connect uh, the adhesive field with uh, the connective of fibers that uh, we discover during preparation step immediately. And so when we etch uh, the animal, we can, we can treat this, uh, this portion of dentin discover only by sandblaster. Or uh, in a, as alternative, we can use also the softless -like, soft -like disc for composite to roughen the, the dentin surfaces. After etching, we can apply the adhesive, and at the same time, we can position carefully the veneers, in this case, uh, removing the excess of cement by a very thin paint brush, avoiding to use the, 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 the floss that could uh, move, that could displace the veneers during light cure. After removing the excess of cement, we light cure for each side the restoration for 90 seconds. And after that, we can, I, I always activate a, a fluorescence mode of my microscope that highlights the composite excess raising of the cement that I use to cement each restoration. And careful with the, with the curettes, we can, we can remove this uh, residue of uh, composite cement uh, carefully, avoiding to touch the thin port portion third cervical of the veneers, avoiding fracturing fracturing of this uh, part of our definitive restoration. After that, I always use floss and strip to be sure to have removed all the excess of resin from the interproximal areas and as a, a end uh, treatment, I position some glycerin that cover all the restoration and I like cure again in order to inhibit the, the oxygen radical and to stabilize better the cementation around the prosthetic restoration previously uh, positioned and like cure. So after removing the rubber dam, this is, was the final result in which, uh, uh, in which uh, the intermediate papilla was as usual collapsed because of the rubber dam push it uh, to apical direction and uh, uh, it is a natural, a natural uh, result, absolutely. And uh, also the patient was fully satisfied for the final result that I was able to obtain after two days of work following a chair-side process of work. So guys, this is my vision 
about uh, digital aesthetic dentistry. And uh, uh, now there is a Q&A session. I can answer to your question. And uh, if uh, I uh, won't be able to answer to the whole question that uh, probably you have right, uh, this is my email and uh, you can send directly to my email address your question, your doubt, and in a few days I, uh, uh, I will answer to you directly. Thank you very much for your attention, for your nice invitation, and uh, I hope to, to be able to share with you and to convey with you my passion for this uh, field, these uh, topics that uh, I love like uh, my family. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I wait Thank you so much, question. doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are such a talent dentist. It's, it's amazing that you have this talent that you, uh, you know how to send the message. And it's, it's beautiful. Your class is so beautiful. Well done, you know. And I love that. It's amazing. I wrote, even I wrote to Fabian, I love you, the, the, the way you, you send the message, you know, it's beautiful. How you're Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I, I, am becoming, I am becoming completely red. No, no, don't. In don't. face. But it is, when I saw your class last, last, last year in Bogota, I told Danny, Danny, you, we have so much to learn with Dr. Roberto. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Guys, if you have questions, you can put on key and in, uh, question and answer. I don't know if you are guys putting on, on the, the wrong way in, in the, on the chat. Let me check here. We have a question from Rashala. Which SED printer you use in your practice, doctor? Yeah, I use uh, DWS uh, is the brand of my, of my 3D printer. But uh, today there are a lot, uh, a lot of uh, 3D printer uh, inside into the market. But uh, uh, I am sure I am waiting. Uh, probably I don't know. Probably you, Daniel, uh, will be able to to say something about uh, the some rumors uh, are saying that Densply Sirona are studying uh, a 3D printer for uh, for us uh, for the next future. I don't know. There's some rumors. Some <laughs> rumors. <laughs> there, there are but some rumors. I, 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 but when there's, there's rumors a lot about a lot of things, you know, but we never know if it's true or not, you know. Yeah, I, 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 as usual, as usual, Densply Sirona uh, are, uh, are producing a great product and uh, uh, the prime uh, products about 3D printer will be amazing. I am sure about that. I am waiting this moment. So am I. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> Jorge, uh, uh, he's asking you if you have some recom uh, recommendation uh, about uh, uh, returning uh, of work uh, with this condition of COVID. Uh, if you have a recommendation about gloves or gloves or face masks. And yeah, uh, so in Italy, uh, we are using uh, the protection, uh, a lot of protections, and uh, we are using uh, two pair of gloves, and uh, we are using uh, goggles. Uh, we are also using a, a mask, a very protective FFP2 or FFP3. And uh, we have a lot of procedures to, to do that. But also, Densply Sirona offered to us uh, a great, uh, uh, a great uh, product because, uh, for example, we can, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can do the disinfection of the prime, the prime scam, or we can, uh, we can use uh, the disposable, uh, the disposable uh, prime scam insert or uh, there is also uh, uh, the possibility to, to sterilize uh, the, 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 the part that go inside into the patient's mouth. 
yeah, now we have to protect. Uh, if uh, these colleagues would like to contact me uh, directly to my email, I can uh, I can share with him all the protection that I am using uh, now in my surgery during my daily practice. Uh, Dr. Fernando, asking you if you can talk a little bit more about the the study that you showed uh, about the comparison the. Uh, the, the scanners yeah uh, this so I can show uh, pictures of that study of this study made by the Zurich uh, Zurich University it means this this yeah. Daniel okay yes so this uh, was a study that uh, the group of uh, Professor Mel of the Zurich University uh, made uh, more in uh, 2019 and more precisely, uh, they compare all the uh, scanners that, that are inside into the market and uh, comparing each of them with the conventional technique. So at the end, in the end of the story, the conclusion were in favor of Prime Scam and the Omnicam that as you can see for the full arch or anterior segment or posterior segment, the discrepancy between in, uh, in microns uh, uh, between uh, the, the Omnicam and price cam is very close to the gold standard that now today is a conventional technique. But uh, it's, uh, the results are absolutely, absolutely better for these two scanners comparing to the other scanners. It's 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 clear. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 clear. It's clear. So oh, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Roberto, I'd like to know if when you're doing like some static treatment, even that you're working with Exocad or other software, there are some cases that you you try to do by yourself with the catalog of Prime Scan that we have in the software. Or like it's your protocol to, to follow this kind of it's almost a rule that you're going to follow and you're going to import and export or maybe you you you, you could try yeah I, I understand so I I think that uh, unfortunately I think this is a, a negative things about uh, the software CEREC uh, the engineer of uh, thanks to I Sirona removed the library from the the CEREC and that uh, was uh, not a good idea uh, but is my is my opinion I think that uh, if you would like to create an amazing new smile you have to copy some uh, uh, good anatomical reference by biocopy function yeah. and but, but it, is it is necessary yeah but you're talking about th that library that we had in the bio jaw no, uh, is the library that uh, are inside in the yeah in the bio jaw in the bio jaw of Serec yeah. I think course. it's a matter. I think it's a matter of the license because once you have like the pro module, you're going to appear. If you do not have the pro module, it's going yeah. To I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. But uh, the average of our colleagues uh, mm -hmm. uh, have not the license to to see the li yeah. the, the the library. Yeah. And so. For them, it's uh, almost impossible to choose uh, a proper shape or proper morphology. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But in my case, uh, the advantages to, to share the STL file from the, the, from the CEREC to the uh, Smile Creator model of Exocad is that uh, through the Exocad, I am able to create directly the digital WhatsApp, avoiding yeah. to share avoiding yeah. sharing the, uh, the the impression with my dental technician yeah. because uh, because i don't know in brazil but uh, in italy it's very very difficult to have a dental technician that are be able to model in by wax onto the plaster model an amazing and amazing new morphology mm -hmm. it's very very difficult mm -hmm. so for this reason i prefer to use uh, my creator model of exocat with which yeah. uh, in a few minutes, in a very few minutes, I am able to modify the morphology. 
and yeah. uh, you can buy new morphology, new library in Exocad, and you can uh, update it, uh, the, the Smile Creator library, uh, as you want. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, doctor, may, I, uh, may you stop to sharing your, your screen for a moment, just for me to, to show the guys our uh, pages of... Uh, of on the web uh here we are so i can yeah, show, show uh, stop share now yeah. i am stop share yeah now i can yeah, show Dougie. the guy we have our... one more we have one more question here from oh Nicholas. sorry you sorry can you read for the guys yeah yeah uh, he's he's asking which 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 with ultrasound tip for preparation do you use sorry which a ultrasound tip for yeah for I use the I use uh, the cavo cavo instruments and the uh, Sony flex instruments and uh, the tip is as the same the same chamfer profile of the bar that I used before yeah. I use a comet bar diamond bar with uh, a, a green uh, ring and with uh, a red with a small diamond uh, uh, with a small abrasivity with a smooth abrasivity yeah. and uh, ultrasonic tip have the same shape uh, of chamfer of the, the, the bar that i used to prepare okay. other question do you mix the cortisone with the anesthetic yeah so it means that uh, i take the an, uh, anesthesiology in the area in which i have to prepare the teeth and uh, at the end after uh, two hours after two hours of during which i prepare i take the impression i i did again the mocap before sending the patient home i take an injection in the local areas uh, uh, of four milligram of cortisone because they uh, help you Daniela to to stop uh, any bleeding the day after when you have to cement uh, the restoration and uh, uh, overall the the, uh, the swell the swelling because retraction cord are a dramatic are a perfect instrument to move to apical direction the soft uh, tissues is but is at the same time a dangerous instrument of work because uh, it creating some inflammatory areas uh, around the, the teeth that you prepared okay guys uh, i do believe that we uh, are a little bit longer our time uh, i would like to invite everyone that participated our from our uh thanks to web class today to to visit our facebook and instagram uh, that's uh we have a uh, three that's one for inst institutional there is for CADCAN and imaging and uh, this class is going to be online on youtube and that's web class in in two or three days and probably in three days uh, um, uh next week and uh just a second uh, stop sharing right now uh i would like to thank you dr uh, molinari for this amazing and perfect job it was really really beautiful class i would like to thank you everyone that uh, attend this meeting we have uh, our dealers we have friends we have mentors uh we have uh uh, the participation of uh, Leandro Passos, Daniel Agio, and Maria that have always worked so hard. And thank you, Doctor. Uh, we have Luba from Salzburg. We have also uh, Fabiana. We have so many. We have friends, and we have our dealers from our side. I, we have here managers from Marcelo, Jaime and i'm so happy i'm so happy and thank you so much doctor you are so, so daniel happy. and we have also you thank you for your great uh, as a presenter you are the best absolutely of our group thank you very much daniel for thank your you work guys. stay safe and, and stay home thank you you too thank you thank you, thank you. Bye, -bye. Thank you. bye bye thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye.